The NBA is expanding to two new cities, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Seattle, Washington, with the Venom being the new team in Vegas, and of course, the Sonics, the returning team in Seattle. We are taking over the Las Vegas Venom as their first GM, and we're tasked with winning a championship in five seasons. The first step to do that was in the expansion draft. Our first overall pick was point guard Markel Fultz, and would follow that up with a two guard in Luke Kennard. Dante Exum would be our third pick at the small forward position, with Dario Saric at the power forward position, and Jalen Smith would be our first pick at the center position. We'd take Cameron Payne to be our number one option off the bench, and Isaiah Joe as our go-to three-point shooter for the second unit. We would also scoop up Amir Coffey and Trey Lyles as a stretch four with good shooting for the bench squad. We would draft another big man who could shoot in Danilo Gallinari, and our last three picks would be Torian Prince, Marcus Moore Sr., and Malachi Flynn. Our starting lineup for year one would be Markel Fultz on the point, Isaiah Joe at the two guard, Dante Exum at small forward, Dario Saric playing the stretch four, and Jalen Smith at the center position. Cameron Payne would be our go-to scorer off the bench, followed by our perimeter shooter Luke Kennard. Torian Prince and Trey Lyles would fill the three and four position, and Danilo Gallinari would be our center, giving us another big man who could space the floor with his shooting. Let's get right into the action in season one and see how our first game with the Vegas Venom goes against the Washington Wizards. Dario Saric would go on to score the first points in our organization's history, but unfortunately for us, the Washington Wizards were out to a quick start today. We were having a tough time slowing down their offense, and we were not off to the greatest of starts in the first quarter. But thankfully, we would close in on the deficit a little and would only be down by five headed into the second quarter. We were doing our best to try to come back in this game as Markel Fultz would find Luke Kennard for our first ever three-pointer. Despite that shot though, we didn't have a lot more going for us on offense the rest of the second quarter tonight and unfortunately would still be down by five points headed into halftime. The Wizards would come out and score the first bucket to start the second half tonight against us, so we definitely needed to answer with a bucket of our own as Markel Fultz would do that right here. No matter what we seem to do on offense though, we couldn't seem to slow down Washington's offense. As on the fast break here, Jordan Poole would make it a 10 point game for the Wizards. And this was the largest their lead had been all night over us. We needed to get buckets early here in the fourth quarter if we wanted any chance of coming back against Washington. And we were actually on a good pace to do so as we got it down to only a four point game here. Unfortunately for us though, we couldn't slow down Washington and they'd get it back to a 10 point lead as they would run the clock out and we would end up losing our first ever game here at home. Despite the loss, our number one overall pick in the expansion draft, Markel Fultz had a great night with 13 points, two rebounds, and four assists. And our team would go on to win three games in a row as we got ready to start the month of November. We were taking on the Clippers in our next game, and with the roster they had recently assembled, were one of the top teams in the Western Conference. This was going to be a true test to see how our very young expansion team stacked up against one of the best, as they would most likely be a team we have to compete for for the Western Conference in the next few seasons. The Clippers offense was getting out to a hot start for them in the first quarter tonight, and they would show why they were one of the top teams as they would go up by seven headed into the second. James Harden would help extend this lead to double digits for the Clippers in the second quarter as we now found ourselves down by nine points, but Luke Kennard would hit this three-pointer and we would get one more from Dorian Prince right before the end of halftime as we would now only be down by three points. This game was still within our grasp as Jalen Smith would start off the second half with an and one for us and would tie the game up with this free throw. We were trading leads with the Clippers throughout most of the third quarter tonight and it looked like we had a serious chance of winning this game headed into the fourth. We still had a whole quarter to play though and that meant the Clippers offense had plenty of time as after trading leads they decided enough was enough and they were going to extend the lead they had with just under a minute and a half to go. LA's lead had gotten up to six and this three ball from Harden seemed to be the dagger as we wouldn't be able to come back after that shot and would lose this one 61 to 54. Despite the loss we had one bright spot this game and that was our young center Jalen Smith as he put up 20 points and five rebounds for us. And reaching the end of November, our team was sitting at nine and nine, which wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. We still hadn't got our first win yet in a game that we had played, so we were looking to do that tonight against the Kings back at home. But like all the games we've played before, we knew this was gonna be a tough one because of how our team was built. Sure enough, we were down by five nearing the end of the first quarter, but Luke Kennard would hit one last shot for us. But that deficit would stay at five throughout the start of the second quarter as Luke Kennard would find Markel Fultz for our first three of the night as we would get another one right after that from Dante Exum in the left corner but despite those three pointers for us we were still down by eight as Luke Kennard would come up with one last shot for us before halftime but unfortunately the deficit had not moved at all for us as we were still down by five. Luke Kennard's shooting today from the field was one of the only things keeping us in this game as we were now only down by two and he would come up with another big time shot for us as even though we would give the lead right back to the Kings 
Luke Kennard would knock down another three, but we would keep trading leads with Sacramento throughout the fourth quarter tonight, as we were down by two with less than 50 seconds to go, and Jalen Smith would tie the game up for us. And we now had a chance to take the lead over the Kings as another pick and roll, and Dario Sarge would lay it up and in. And Sacramento only had 18 seconds to work with as De'Aaron Fox would pull up, and that shot would be no good. We would get the rebound, and they would have to foul Cameron Payne as he would go to the line and knock down both of his free throws. And that would put us up by four as it would be too little, too late for the Kings to complete the comeback here in Vegas as we'd pick up the win. We had a great effort from both of our big men and Dario Saric and Jalen Smith as they both put up 14 points in this victory. But despite their great offensive performance, we almost lost this game because of our inability to rebound the ball. That's been a constant theme for this team this season as well as we rank dead last in the league in rebounds per game. So next episode, we're going to take a look at some of the college prospects who could hopefully maybe help us improve our rebounding next season. But for now, it's time to focus on finishing up the month of December here in Season 1. The Hornets would jump out to a quick lead over us here in tonight's matchup, but we would waste no time at all tying it right back up at four piece. Nearing the end of the first quarter, we were down by four, and Cameron Payne would send us into the second with this three-pointer. But throughout the entire first half night, we just couldn't seem to stop the Charlotte Hornets off offense at all, as they would eventually go up by 10 points over us before the end of the first half. Down by 10, Luke Kennard would make some shifty moves, and he would knock down one more three-pointer for us, and I have no idea why we were celebrating heading into halftime down by 7. We would get right to work, though, in the second half, as Markel Fultz would knock down a three-pointer, and then Dante Exum would try to give us a lead with a three. It would be no good, but Markel Fultz would put it back up for the lead, and now instead of trying to come back, we were trying to hold this lead over the Hornets, as we would head into the fourth quarter up by eight and although Markel Fultz would miss this shot, Dario Saric would put it back up and in and our lead had now officially extended to double digits over the Hornets as there wouldn't be enough time for them to come back in the fourth quarter and we would get another win. Markel Fultz had a fantastic performance as he had a double-double with 11 points and 10 assists tonight and although we were a little better rebounding this game, the Hornets almost tripled our offensive rebounding tonight which really kept them in the game. We would go three and seven in the span of our next 10 games with two two left to play in December, and we were sitting at 15 and 17, trying to get back to 500 to start the new year. If we wanted to do that, we would have to pick up a win here at home against the Rockets tonight, and we had jumped out to an early lead over them here in the first quarter, but they would fight their way back and make it a one-point game headed into the second. Just a little over two minutes in, and Houston would tie the game up for the first time tonight, and we would end up trading leads back and forth with them throughout most of the second quarter tonight, but would get one last bucket from Torian Prince on a second chance effort before the end of the first half, and we would head into the locker room up by two over Houston. Our offense started to come alive, and we started to pull away from the Rockets in the second half, as at one point we were up by 10, but they would start cutting our lead back near the end of the third. Throughout the fourth, they would slowly chip away at our lead to make it only a four-point game, and with less than 15 seconds to go on a second chance rebound, they would knock down a three to make it a one-point game, so they would have to intentionally foul Isaiah Joe and send him to the free throw line, where he would knock down both of his free throws. As it would be a three-point game with less than five seconds to go, the Rockets needed this shot to send it into overtime, and it would be no good as we would get the win, thanks in part to an almost double-double performance with 15 points and nine rebounds from our center, Jalen Smith. We had one game left in the month of December we needed to win to get to 500, and we would do just that as we'd pick up the 107-99 win over the Trailblazers on the road. It was now time for us to start 2024 in the month of January, and we were barely holding on to the eighth seed sitting at 17 and 17 and it did pain me to see our expansion team counterpart the Seattle Supersonics in the second seed at 26 and 7. Our team had been led by the great performance of our young center Jalen Smith who was averaging almost a double double with 16 points per game and 9 rebounds per game. And our number one overall pick Markel Fultz was doing well as he was averaging 12 points a game, 3 rebounds and 5 assists. Next episode we will get through January and February in season number one and it will tip off with a game against against our expansion counterparts on the road taking on the Seattle Supersonics.